A final from Philadelphia where Joel Embiid returns. Trust the process. 18 points, 11 rebounds in 36 minutes. And he inspires his ball club to a 20-point victory. The 76ers were 16 of 33 in this game. You consider the first two games of the series, they hit 14 threes combined. Danny Green, Tyrese Maxey leading the way. Danny Green, all of his 21 points coming from beyond the arc as he hit seven three balls and has a season high 21. Tyrese Maxey, five of six from beyond the arc for 21. Quickly become a star in front of our eyes as Philadelphia locks down Miami 99 to 79. And this is pretty incredible in terms of how bad it has been for Miami when they go to Philadelphia. They're now 3-12 and in their past 15 games in the city of brotherly love. And now we've got ourselves a 2-1 series as Philadelphia flips the script in game three. All right, so welcome to CBS Sports NBA writer Colin Ward Henninger and Colin Joel Embiid back showing his toughness, 18 points, 11 rebounds in 36 minutes. What did you see from Embiid in his return? Uh, well, the first thing I saw was a, a relatively healthy Joel Embiid, which is what everyone in Philadelphia wanted to see. I certainly didn't expect to see 36 minutes from Embiid. Yes, he was fatigued. Yes, he was struggling at times. But just his mere presence out there does so much for them. So to see him be able to put up 36 minutes in such an important game, that's huge for Philadelphia moving forward in this series. And then in terms of his play, you saw it. He, he didn't have the lift on his jumper. He wasn't able to knock down shots. He wasn't a, a monster inside. But just his mere presence being out there led to all those wide open three-pointers for the 76ers. And then really what stood out to me was defensively. What he was able to do in the key, keeping Miami out of the paint and altering shots in there, that was really the difference for me in what was a horrible offensive offensive game for Miami. It was because of Joel Embiid's presence inside. Yeah, I want to touch on that because you brought up a great point. His presence really affected Bam Adebayo, who was good in the first two games, but quiet in game three, nine points, three rebounds. Absolutely, and that's directly attributed to Joel Embiid. You could see him struggling out there. Uh, Bam couldn't get to the rim, so he was trying to settle for those kind of mid-paint uh, mid-range jumpers that just weren't falling for him. Uh, but he didn't collect a lot of rebounds either. And, th and that is a testament to not only Joel Embiid's presence inside, but the fact that Joel Embiid is out there setting screens, which leads to switches, because Bam Adebayo is one of the, the switchiest big men in the NBA. So he switches onto a guard. That takes him out of the paint. That's an advantage for Philadelphia. So that's something that Miami is probably going to have to look at heading into the next game. Yeah, you want to talk about instant impact. Bam Adebayo in the first two games, 47 points combined, 21 rebounds in games one and two. Game three, nine points, three rebounds. I mean, that is just absolute shutdown from what Joel Embiid was able to do in game three. And really, Philly flipped the script here, Colin. They made more threes in game three than they did in games one and two combined. 14 of 64, putrid from beyond the arc in the first two games. Game three, 16 of 33, thanks to Danny Green, who had seven of them as he goes for a season-high 21 points. How about the turnaround from beyond the arc in game three for Philly? Yeah, I mean, there's certainly just some variance there. They were bound to start knocking down threes. Uh, Danny Green got extremely hot, which he's been known to do, a very kind of inconsistent shooter over the course of his career who could have these big games. Uh, but really, you know, I hate to bring everything back to Joel Embiid, but when he is sucking in the defense like that and drawing so much attention, it creates wide open looks for these guys. And you look up and down the, the roster, really Green got hot, Tyrese Maxey got hot in the second half. Uh, but James Harden didn't shoot threes well. Tobias Harris didn't shoot threes well. So if you're Philadelphia, you're thinking, you know, uh, people might think we got hot from three, got lucky. But really, it seems like this is a sustainable formula. And that even if Danny Green hits, you know, two or three next game, you're going to see more from Harden. You're going to see more from Harris. Uh, so I, I think, you know, obviously this is this is stated the obvious. But Joel Embiid's impact out there, just his presence, sucks in the defense, allows a lot more wide open threes. And once they get in their rhythm, particularly at home, they're going to be able to knock those threes down. Yeah, Philadelphia really blitzed Miami in the fourth quarter, outscoring them 31 to 14. It was relatively close uh, most of way. I know that Philadelphia had a double digit lead uh, at some points during the game, but that fourth quarter was really the difference here. Game four Sunday. Do you expect this series to be tied heading back to Miami for game five? 
You know, heading into this game, uh, even if the Sixers won, I was probably leaning towards Miami winning the next game. But after seeing what Joel Embiid was able to do playing those 36 minutes, uh, the energy that this team brought at home, I think, you know, obviously they knew they were down uh, uh, their MVP, their best player uh, in those first two games. Seeing him back really seemed to energize the rest of the team. So I think I'm going to go with Philadelphia in game four. I, I think that Miami really is facing a problem offensively where the, really the, all they could get uh, was Jimmy Butler going to the rim. They shell, settled for a lot of mid-range jumpers. They did not knock down three-pointers. They have a problem when they bring in Tyler Hero because he's one of their best offensive players, but Philadelphia relentlessly targets him on the other side. So I think Miami is going to have some things to figure out, and Joel Embiid is only going to get better as he gets his conditioning back. There you go. Colin Ward-Henninger saying it's going to be tied Going back to Miami for game five as Joel Embiid returns and leads his team to victory coming back from injury. What a performance by him in the 76ers in game three. Colin, thanks. And with Embiid's return, it really allowed Danny Green to get open, get good looks, as Colin pointed out. He hit seven three-pointers in this game, seven of nine from beyond the arc for 21 points. Tied for the second most in a playoff game in 76ers history. Only Allen Iverson had more with eight in a game back in 2001. Now Philly back in this series, down two games to one, going into game four on Sunday back in Philadelphia. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.